So let's start with are Wall Street investors finally waking up to think of Tesla as an AI company? And every week there's one or new people. And this time we've got two to, to explain further. The first one is Deutsche Bank. So Simon Hale, he's a portfolio manager. He's been on the show quite often recently. And uh, he's he's the, one of the people that's helping us kind of interpret what's happening in Wall Street. And he says, looks like Wall Street is starting to wake up to the fact that Tesla is an AI company, possibly the real world AI leader. So there's two parts here I'd like you to tell me more. One is Tesla is an AI company. The other one is, why can't they recognize AI, Tesla as a real world AI leader? In fact, a leader in AI. So here's Deutsche Bank um, naming Tesla as a top pick. As a, a re recent momentum is only the beginning of a strong period. They have quite a number of great comments here. So we'll, we'll tear this apart in one by one. So the analyst is Edison Yu. He resumed coverage of the of Tesla with a buy rating and a price target of $295, which is 36%, named Tesla talk pick. So first interesting sentence he said is, at the core, we do not see Tesla as an automaker but rather a tech platform attempting to reshape multiple industries deserving of a unique type of valuation framework. Why don't we pause here before we get to the other paragraphs? What's your, what's your thought about that? Yeah, it sounds like the talking points that we've been hearing from Tesla retail investors for a long time. And I like to spend a lot of time on X, just kind of uh, listening to arguments on both sides of the aisle for and against Tesla. And when you do that, and then you watch this coverage by mainstream analysts, then there's almost nothing that they ever say that you haven't heard before. And I think this is obviously a case where, you know, retail has been ahead of the curve on exploring some of these themes, um, but it is good to keep a finger on the pulse of, okay, when do those arguments really start to actually be main talking points among Wall Street analysts and you know among fund managers and these types of people, um, because that does give you some insight on where the market is headed overall, where retail investors may be right, maybe they're right far too early. And uh, it can take a while for some of those themes to really play out over time. And so if you're someone who not only wants to understand where something is headed, but you know when consensus will actually agree that that's where it's headed, then it's really important to track these types of things. I love it. So here's Deutsche Bank, right? Finally saying that it's a tech platform and a unique type of valuation framework. So that is a big statement, I think. It's not just, yeah, it's going to happen. But no, it's valuation and you need to start evaluating it now with this information. Near term, automotive deliveries and margin have indeed been softer, but we view this as a temporary ahead of new models and refreshes. So statement one, they recognize that new models and refreshes are coming. We're in between the two growth curves, but the second growth curve is coming right now. Long term, Tesla is an emerging leader in autonomous driving and humanoid robots, which represents some of the most clear and lucrative applications of end-to-end -end AI. So the question I think we need to, you know, we're hearing more and more of these uh, uh, Wall Street uh, institutions saying this, but the question is, how long term? So, you know, there's another guy that we've been following and he says, yes, Tesla Robotaxi is coming, but then he goes, it's going to be in 2040. <laughs> so then, okay. Yeah. It's like, okay, yes, you're right, but wrong. You're so wrong. I mean, that, I guess that's the debate, right? So what do you think about uh, what you're hearing from these Wall Street guys? Well, I think this is you know, kind of a second order consequence of a larger conversation that's been happening now for a few months where a lot of people, big names in Silicon Valley and just institutional analysts and uh, investors alike are recognizing that pretty much all of the money that is going into AI right now is ending up in NVIDIA's pockets. And NVIDIA is winning, but where are the return on investments going to come from for a lot of these companies? And the more that people look into it, the more and more it's difficult to tell exactly where those returns are going to come from. And one of the major reasons for that is because everyone is trying to compete like mad uh, to make products. And then when 
you know, you come up with a great product that you could monetize if no one was competing with you. Well, that's one profile of returns. But then if you have 10 competitors and some of them are willing to give it away for almost free, well, all of a sudden, even though there's an extremely valuable product that can be made there, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to earn money back off of it. And that is increasingly looking like what a lot of the consensus LLM AI craze is going to end up like. It's going to be hard for Microsoft or uh, with OpenAI and ChatGPT to monetize on that directly. They're going to have to really support large amounts of investments over long periods of time and then compete on network effects. Um, and they're just going to have to use these big war chests while they go to war with other companies like Google and like Facebook. Um, so, you know, that makes it very difficult. And in the midst of all of that saying, okay, hey, we've got AI in the form of these LLMs and there's going to be a ton of cool stuff it's able to do, but I don't know where the money is going to come from on the back end to pay for my upfront investments. But Tesla's over here and they're doing artificial intelligence research and they're trying to apply it to the real world and nobody is competing with them. And not only is no one competing with them, no one has the ability to collect the data that would compete with them, even if they were trying, or the production capacity to make the things that could collect the data if they wanted to try. Oh, wait a second. Tesla's a very unique company when it comes to a business model that is actually functional over the long period of time and has the potential, you know, we haven't seen it yet, but has the potential to return trillions of dollars worth of value based on billions of dollars worth of investment. And so I think that the more people are looking at the wider AI landscape and coming to, you know, having a come to Jesus moment essentially on, wow, this is just going to be a bloodbath of super competitive products and services here and Tesla's over there and they're just doing something that's completely different. It's Peter Thiel's classic zero to one. Like they're just competing in a space that no one else is really trying to compete in. And that allows them to, you know, have just a, a completely different thing. And then if you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I make an asymmetric bet? Like you, if you're saying I need to invest $10 billion this year in AI stuff, because obviously the future is AI stuff. And we've got to be involved in playing that game. Well, you should at least allocate some of that money towards Tesla because everything else that you're looking at, you know, has a pretty scary risk return profile on it uh, compared to Tesla. I love it. It's happening. Now, the other thing beyond just is Tesla an AI company? How do you value the future? It's a tech company. It's that Tesla is an ecosystem. And Elon Musk is an ecosystem with eco um, Musconomy. And this is where Adam Jonas of Morgan Stanley dropped a brand new note. We're going to walk you through each one of these points. But I love it because Morgan Stanley is, he's seen, he's respected by the other analysts. And when he, you know, he's often ahead, he'll say something and then the others will eventually start to parrot what he's saying. So that's where I think this value is. Um, Morgan Stanley's Adam Jonas, we note that the value of Elon Musk non-Tesla stakes may be reaching parity, exceeding the value of his Tesla shares. The, the value of all the other companies that Elon is working on is now to the point where it's almost parity and will, will eventually exceed the value of his Tesla shares. We urge Tesla investors to expand their analysis of the company's operational strategic outlook to include scenarios that may potentially involve Musk's other interests outside the company. So this Musconomy, this is a standard image that we've seen many times before that Tesla has worked with and it can can um, benefit from X and XAI, Neuralink, Optimus, FSD and batteries, and the boring company SpaceX, they all help each other. You know, that uh, technology is happening right for well. We'll talk about XAI and Tesla because they're just yesterday, uh, two days ago, there was this article by Wall Street Journal talking about how um, they incorrectly are saying that there's rumors or he's, there's that XAI is going to share revenue. Tesla is going to share revenue for XAI's technology. Uh, before we get there, what's your thoughts about the Musconomy and this idea that as the other companies are just growing like crazy, how that benefits from Tesla investors? Yeah, I think there's a 
couple of things in there that are interesting on the on the chart. You know, a number of whether it was Optimus or batteries or FSD or all, you know, put on that chart as things, those are actually things that are inside of Tesla. And then everything else on the list was outside of Tesla, but it is, um, I think it is somewhat fair even to characterize it that way, because I think Tesla really is, you know, a collection of startups that are all working on some really big projects and FSD batteries and Optimus are all their own kind of big startup ideas that are inside of Tesla. But obviously those are something that is owned by Tesla investors. And then SpaceX obviously is the next biggest thing that Elon is doing. And it is a big thing and it is rivaling now the value of his Tesla ownership uh, because he owns you know more of his SpaceX thing. And that company is also getting to be very large now. I always see synergies between these things um, because A, you know, there's the old saying that we have in the Tesla community that a lot of this stuff just really has to, you know, can be unified around the theme of how do we colonize Mars and pretty much everything that he does in one way, shape or form can be useful um, in that effort. And so I think that whether it's SpaceX, whether it's the Boring, or the Boring Company, uh, whether it's Neuralink or Optimus Robots, that a lot of these things actually do have application for the effort to colonize Mars. And, but because of that kind of shared overarching value, then they have interesting ways that they connect to one another as well. And, you know, whether it's trying to explore intelligence or have a better understanding of human neurology through their research with Neuralink, like a lot of these things really do end up having weird ways that they benefit one another and that, you know, in those overlapping places, you can actually get really interesting learnings that are super valuable in and of themselves because they are combining research in two different areas that ends up uh, being very, very um, beneficial, you know, co-beneficial to one another. And if you didn't do this thing over here and this thing over here, you might not see these patterns emerge in both of those places that then when you put them together, all of a sudden it's like, oh, that just helps you understand the solution to a, a higher problem. Um, and then, yeah, I think it, it's pretty obvious where you do have a number of direct benefits of something like XAI to the Optimus bot or to Tesla whether that's through a you know a voice assistant that's what Siri should be for your car, um, a lot of those things make a lot of sense, and you don't even have to work very hard. But I think there's going to be a number of other things beyond those direct, you know, no common sense or completely common sense uh, applications where things will just pop up. And you know we've seen Tesla land itself a number of times over the years, just magically kind of in the right place to take advantage of a big technology shift like Optimus, um, that really that opportunity presents itself because Elon has been for a number of years kind of exploring the frontier of technological development in a number of areas. Like, you know, I don't know that we would have gotten FSD or the Optimus robot if he hadn't started OpenAI back in 2014 and had his brain really cranking on some of the challenges that OpenAI was going to face down the road and understanding the application of this new neural net technology that had you know kind of developed in 2012 uh, with the breakthroughs in ImageNet. And so, yeah, I think that all of those things, we're just gonna continue to see more and more uh, instances of those emergent uh, opportunities that we can take advantage of better than other people because Elon continues to really push the boundaries in so many different areas. Yeah, there's so many connections. Uh, just one example is the batteries. Very straightforward. Electric vehicles need batteries. Robots need batteries. Energy, Tesla Energy, of course, is the batteries and large-scale batteries, right? And it goes on and on and on. So Tesla and XAI, right? Let's talk about that. Common ground. This is from Morgan Stanley's note. They said that Wall Street Journal reported on a story of Tesla and Musk's AI, XAI, have discussed potential licensing, revenue opportunities. And then, of course, Elon said, no, that was not accurate. This is actually the actual article written. 
And they were talking about that there's an arrangement where Tesla would get access to XAI's technology in exchange for um, XAI would get some share of the revenue. So that was weird. Elon said, how many fake articles have you seen about Tesla at this point? 100, 1,000, maybe several thousand? Wall Street Journal's talking nonsense. He also said he hasn't read their article, but the above is not, this is before he said that, uh, but the above is not accurate. Tesla's learned a lot from discussions with engineers at XAI that have helped accelerate achieving unsupervised FSC, but there's no need to license anything from XAI. And he talks about the difference between XAI uh, LLM versus real world video data from Tesla. So that's uh, what his reply is. And then here's some thoughts from Morgan Stanley. AI is bigger than electric vehicles. So a recent investor survey suggested that the AI theme is more deterministic to Tesla's share price than electric vehicles by roughly two to one. Again, another point where investors are now saying that a Tesla is more of an AI company than electric vehicles. In our view, this makes commercial scientific economic developments around Elon Musk privately held pure play AI startup very relevant. Um, yeah, before we move on, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely based on where Elon has been spending his time and the comments that he's been making on recent earnings calls, like this AI theme is Elon's focus pretty much across the board. Um, and he's been focused on that inside of Tesla now for quite a while as well. And so, you know, the question is, if you believe him, then that has to play a larger role in your future projections for what Tesla does as a company than just the autonomous vehicle or not, sorry, than just the EV technology itself. So um, that is is clearly true. And I think that's, you know, the, the biggest thing that bears versus bulls fight over um, is that bulls are always trying to define Tesla as just purely an automotive company. And that has not been true in the past, and I don't think it's going to be true in the future either.